We're going to go for the 6G 25mm. Now for all of you that don't know what that means, Google it because we don't know either. <laughs> Welcome back to our channel guys. We're James and Alex. For years we travelled the world until Covid hit, so we decided to buy a bus in Australia and without any experience build a home on wheels from scratch. Looks really good. It looks really, really good. Happy. I'm very impressed. So far we've shown you how we ripped everything out, tackled the insulation, the floor and the ceiling and in today's vlog we'll be moving on to the overheads and the cupboards. This is one we made earlier. Like all of our videos we will be covering everything from start to finish so there's no need for you to wander off searching through our other videos on how to finish the job. If you're tackling something like this yourself, we've left a list of materials in the description below. You're so sweaty. I'm so hot. Oh, so hot. <laughs> All right, let's get this bad boy up. Do you want to get the other end? Oh, in. Oh. We're getting there, guys. It's already been one of those days. One of the many things that we've learned since doing this build is trial and error. Because of the shape of the bus and what we want to achieve, we are having to really work around different angles, uh, different thicknesses of timber, different brackets. So for our overheads, we've attached a two x four to the top using self-tapping metal screws. So it goes through the timber, through the metal ribs of the bus. And then we've got these thinner pieces, which are 64 by 19 mil. Um, the length will be dependent on how big you want the actual overheads to be. We've got these down pieces, which are of the same material. These are fixed to the 2x4 by using these L-shaped brackets which we picked up from Bunnings. You can get a pack of like 5 or 8 for like 5 bucks or something. And what we want to do eventually is finish off the underside using tongue and groove. Use brackets, which again are from Bunnings. We bent them because they were a 90 degree corner and we're going to have them like this. This gives us enough room to drill through onto the timber and then enough room drill through to the metal, thus meaning <laughs> we have a now a surface, surface area to put the uh, tongue and groove to. So when we started this overhead cupboard with these shiplap panels on the underside, we started from this end and worked our way, thinking when we get to the end we'd have to cut a piece in half, but no. What are the chances, honestly, we have to celebrate these little wins because nothing is going right for us. So the fact that we don't have to saw this in half is like the best thing ever. That is unbelievable, <laughs> like what the hell? Yay, something went right. <laughs> no. Last one. Last one. And the last nail is going in. It's not even a nail, it's a screw. <laughs> oh, we have an overhead cabinet. Minus the doors. I mean, minus the doors, but that's oh, okay. That looks sexy. It looks so good. I'm so proud of us. I'm proud of us too. It's these little wins that we have to celebrate. Huh. Well I done. I cry. <laughs> With happiness. You're so sweaty. I'm so hot. Oh, so hot. So, we're going to show you how we're currently making this stand in divider in the overhead cabinet. Okay, so what we're using is the timber, which we measure and cut at an angle, like so, to meet with the angle of this piece at the top. So that's it's nice and snug. And then, what we're doing is pick these up from Bunnings. I think you can get a pack of eight for about five bucks. This is going to sit behind but I bent it into place and then what we do is that sits in here the angled piece that we bent will sit behind like so and we drill through this side and we drill through this side and on the bottom we use 
a bigger one. That will then pull this in like so. And this is the final product. But now we have dividers. Yay! The next big job, the overhead cabinet, which will go at the back. After that, we're gonna try and do the overhead cabinets on the right-hand side, which we're hoping will be just like the front and be a bit easier. But you know how this build goes. Everything takes so much longer than we think. We're just hoping for the best. If we can get something done today, we will be happy. So we've got a little bit of a problem. The problem we have is this section at the back, because it is so curved, we can't frame it like the other overhead cupboards. So what we're having to do is create a stencil with cardboard. Then I'm gonna get masking tape, tape multiple pieces of cardboard together, lay that over the top of the ply, and then cut that with a jigsaw and hope that it works. Oh, look at that. <laughs> She is, did some Van Gogh. Ooh. Already scratching the paint. <laughs> oh, and again. We have a white cabinet. Our first piece of white painted wood. <laughs> this is the frame. We have got a piece of 64 by 19. Now this is going to act as our frame. Now we're using L-shape steel brackets. The difficulty is, the bus is not straight. The bus is a bit of a weird shape. So what we're having to do is, if you can see here, if we put that in, it's not gonna sit well. So I'm basically getting these two pliers and... Hopefully, with your strong biceps. <laughs> like so. That work? Of course it worked, because I have strong biceps. <laughs> So let's start drilling. So it's very important that you make pilot holes first into your body of your bus because it makes it easy for the screws to go in. Does it sound like we know what we're doing? In. James did an amazing job screwing these bad boys in by hand because we can not fit the power drill in. We've just got to put the middle bit in. And one over there. One over here. But look, it looks good. It looks so good. Are you proud of me? I'm so proud of you. Who knew you had a secret talent for woodwork? Look at the cupboard. It looks so good. And I'm so happy that we finally have two overhead cupboards at the back. We are now going to continue with making the cupboard doors for all of our overheads. So we need to make one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cupboard doors. We do have to go to Bunnings to get extra pieces of those flat brackets as well as another set of hinges, but we have enough to get going for the time being. And we have 
all of our pieces to make the cover doors at the back of the bus. We were going to try and glue them together, which we did attempt on one of them, but it just didn't come out that well. Alex is having some problems over here. Oh, it came off. Oh, that came off. Didn't However, <laughs> this one didn't and this one didn't. <laughs> so instead, we're screwing them, but rather than screwing them end to end, or side to side, or like a butt joint, we've decided to use these, which are the flat brackets. So they go on like so. We don't really care if we see that when it opens up because we're not that precious. So for us, this is the quickest and most secure method to make the overheads. Here we go, one door, half done. Oh, it looks good. This was a way better idea than yeah. liquid nails. Yeah, it looks really smart. Perfect. Ta -da. Looks so good. And now we are putting on the Hessian on the back. Now, how we are doing that is we are using both of us to pull the Hessian as tight as possible and staple around the edges. This is one we made earlier. And look how good it comes out. It's really nice and taut. We love the look of Hessian. Rattan seems to be a popular choice as well, but we just thought the holes for us were a little bit too big and we love how tight knit this is. So we went for this option instead. So we'll see how it goes when they're actually installed. And we thought we'd show you how we're doing this one here. So yeah, we'll show you the process of how we do it. It's pretty simple, pretty easy, but it does take four hands. <laughs> Voila. Oh, it looks so good. So the last thing that we will do is just put on some glue on the ends of this fabric just to stop it from fraying because Hessian does fray very easily. So uh, yeah, that will just stop it from going down to the staples. And that's it. Now time to put on the hinges. Yes. Do you want to talk through exactly what you just did? I used a 26 mil drill bit for the hinges because these are basically perfectly round and they go deep by about 10 mil or so. I had to use a drill bit to go all the way down which meant these fitted in snugly. I drilled these two screws in either side and now I'm just trying to gauge if that's correct but it looks like it's good. The level of difficulty continues because we do have a slanted frame at the top Basically, this, as you can see, is on a slant, so oh, we've had to kind of yeah. cobble together, oh, I say we, James has had to cobble together some thin pieces of wood just to kind of make it less slanted. If we don't put a small block of wood just here behind the hinge, what's going to happen is these doors are going to go on at an angle like that but we want them to sit flush like that. By putting that block of wood, it has proven to actually work. We got there. 10 minutes later. And there you have it guys. We have two of our overhead cover doors in at the back. And then just got these two left to go. That's gonna stay open. But this morning has been a success. We have the cover doors on at the back on the side. And um, we have all of the cupboard doors on at the front. Just absolute smashing goals today. Here's one I made earlier. <laughs> this. Oh, Wrong one. <laughs> Here's one I made earlier. <laughs> They run into one another. <laughs> the fuck was that? I don't know. Cheers. <laughs> P.S. We don't recommend to drink and drill. No, we do not. So this is almost dirty. 
this is all trial and error and we are definitely making mistakes along the way so bear with us bear with us <laughs> didn't like you dancing <laughs> hello welcome to the edition of overhead compartment back of bus <laughs> i need a beer you need a beer because you've drunk all the gin. <laughs> Take two. Round two. No. Or three. Round two. We've decided to build. Build? We've decided to build a bus. Go on, muscles. <laughs> this is a great start. So I will let that dry, it takes about an hour or so to dry and give it another paint or two. <laughs> you won't believe how good a day it is. That didn't mean to happen now did it? <laughs> 